Hey folks, Neil here. And this is what you don't see behind the closing room of a business. I guess some people just hand the keys to an auction company and walk away, whereas I'm left to uh, to get rid of all this stuff. Now, if I'm honest, this warehouse we've collated probably, well, two or three, three shops worth of stuff over the years as we've closed them. And an enormous amount of things that have gone on here. You can see in this warehouse, obviously all the way down there is the offices and the workshops. And this, you can see behind me, I've got a 20 foot shipping container to try and get rid of. I've got a two or three ton vault with eight inch thick doors and walls to get rid of. No idea how. And all of this crap and stuff and things of value. Yes, there's things of value, but there's just enormous amount of stuff. Now, half, that was all clogged, that was all clogged up. That was all full of these wooden storage containers of stuff. And we've already got through two skips. It's been a task and obviously I've been doing it over the last six weeks and well no five weeks i've got three weeks left to go but lots of wee waste that we've collated over the years people abandoning devices computers stuff like that enormous great thing eight foot long printer all these things we've used in the past and for some reason stopped using them or they've or whatever this container this container we bought in after all of the burglars uh, burglaries which i'll cover on my channel so like and subscribe because you're not going to want to miss that story of our history of absolutely incessant break-ins by whilst targeted by an eastern european crime syndicate who were broken into five times um over this course of six months uh, and they tried again a year later going through this warehouse wall here they peeled open like a tin can work their way through up over the ceiling of here if something out of mission impossible you were not going to want to miss that because i've got tons of cctv footage that i'm going to show you from those break-ins yes sure enough i've got to sell as much as much as i can to pay off the arrears that i've got rent arrears pay the guys hopefully pay myself well pay myself what's left over but quite an undertaking and actually i think what i what you don't see and what i struggle with is in my video so far i've been pretty upbeat boyish buoyant i've been pretty upbeat about it all but there's some down days and there's some dark days there has been all the way through this sort of business tail off journey which did lead me to um you know my breakdowns and things like that which i will talk about hard times but even now as we get closer as i say goodbye to the guys stop trading it's just going to be me left for a couple of weeks get rid of all this stuff one way or another redecorate get the unit back as, as good a shape as i can it's a task and it does weigh heavy and i'm gonna miss the guys because the guys i work with are amazing i've got this place to fold down before i can then start thinking about the next chapter yeah but a task when i was doing the amazon return pallets there's still some of that stuff left over storage bins i mean as we dismantle all our parts stores that was in there I've got tons and tons of this stuff now this stuff cost a fortune in its day and it's going for like 5p in the pound or whatever now um, so if you are building a business or you need to get secondhand stuff because those containers apart from relabeling them they're going to last forever a lot of stuff you have to be ruthless and just throw in because once this is gone i don't have any real storage as far as what i want to take with me and i don't really want to be taking much of them anyway fresh start whatever it may be if it comes to it at the end of the at the end of the month when i have got to hand the keys back if there is anything of value that hasn't sold it will be going in the skip it's got to be done it's actually as i do do this there's some really cool things that i do come across that i forgot about that we use that we mothballed or whatever that, that are pretty cool so i do have a small box of things that i will like keepsakes essentially that blueprint of the iPhone 5S that used to be on the wall in our, you know, before we moved here. Um, it's pretty cool. I think we, we probably pinched that blueprint off the net and then put our logo on it. Um, that was on the wall. I forgot all about that. That, that literally came here when we moved into this big place, bigger place. We moved out of our offices in Brooklyn's Court. And it was tucked away in the back then and completely forgotten about. That filing cabinet down there. That is an absolute hero. When we got broken into at the beginning of the crime syndicate targeting us. I found his blood where it opened, it yanked, they basically opened up, they smashed everything. They smashed open this, thing, expecting to be anything more than my just paperwork. Left his blood, I spotted a tiny bit, forensics came, sat on it. They burgled somewhere else down south, all got picked up. They took their DNA, matched it to that. He got an extra 18 months or something like that. You know what, despite my upbeat appearance, it does weigh heavy, it's hard to do. It's hard to get motivated to do. And I think once we close and the guys leave, coming in here every day on my own is, even, is going to be even harder. But no, one's out, no one else is going to do this for me. Literally nobody. I'm not going to just give the keys back and walk and let my landlord deal with it because they've been really solid. If they've been absolute 
idiots about it, like my Wellingborough landlord was, a big, big firm they were. And this place is owned by a big firm with a human, really human touch. But the last place, had it had been them, I probably would have just scurried away one night with my valuables and left them the keys, posted them uh, to them and gone, you know what, you sort that out. But I'm going to do right by these guys because they did me right. They've always backed me on this estate. It's a big estate. They're a big company. But the chap called Mark, who's one of the brothers that owns a firm, is on the, on the board. He answers to a board, but he was always super accommodating. I was the wild card on the site. You know, you've got big companies taking all these units. I was the first company on this site, apart from their own self-store, which they, they own. So, and he backed me all the way. And he's been accommodating He's, they've just been amazing. So, you know, what? I'm not going to stitch him up. I'm going to do my very best to return this to his exactly as it was when I moved in. I do the right thing by the right people. One thing I have learned in business, if people shaft you, shaft them back. It's that simple because they won't lose any sleep on it. Um, and yes, there is, and I've always, I always used to be, and still am, that person that does the right thing by anyone, despite, but over the years, you realise that actually the good guy doesn't win everything so there are times where you do have to get your elbows out you have to play dirty and you have to give people as people companies whatever um what how they would treat you uh, otherwise you do get absolutely nowhere and again i'll cover that in other videos there's been times when i've you, you learn let's put it this way you learn a heck of a lot on some of the rules you can bend and some of the rules you can't and things that you can get away with and things that you can't um, I'm not about burning bridges, but the people and companies that will treat you like utter garbage. Uh, and I believe they deserve that back in return. So, interesting stories. One of many, one of many. So my endeavour is to return all this as quick as I can, as close to the date I promised as I can, back to exactly how they want it and how I can do it. So, I'm Neil. Thanks for watching. I'm going to need some motivation on this one. Neil's rock bottom. This is part of the bumping on the rock bottom. Off we go.